Let's take a look at an incident meter reading and see what that's all about. To take an incident meter reading, you're going to need one of these. It's a handheld light meter. I used, my photography used to live or die by these in the days of film because of course I couldn't have a look to see what my shot looked like. The way it works is this little white cone here, it's called an Invercone. The light hits that and it shatters all over the place and inside behind it there is a little reflective light sensor here and that measures how bright the inside of this little cone is. I could use that to do a reflected reading if I wanted by pointing it at things but there's not really much point because your camera will do it far more effectively. First thing you do when you've got a handheld light meter, we switch it on and you, I don't know if you can see but down here in the bottom corner there's a little window that says ISO. That's the same as the ISO on your camera so you must make sure that the ISO on your camera is exactly the same as the ISO on your meter. Okay, in fact, I'd set it on the meter. So look at your camera, see what ISO you're using, set it on your light meter. Because if they're different, it's going to give you the wrong exposure because the light meter won't know how sensitive the sensor on your camera is. Next, what we do is we hold the light meter in front of our subject, like this, and we point the white cone back to the camera. <clears throat> so you've got the camera, I'm going to point it at you. All I have to do is press the little trigger button on the side and it comes up with an exposure. I don't know if you can see this. What it's saying is a 500th of a second at f4.7. So ignore that the 0.7 is so twiddly, I shouldn't worry, but these are super accurate. So there we go. And then all I'd have to do is to go and get my camera, pick it up and manually set a 500th of a second at f4.7. 500th of a second. And I can't get f4, yes I can, f4.5 is really, really close. So that should be the correct exposure. And I can line up the shot and I can take a picture. Let's try it on the groom. <laughs> and indeed, we have a nice black, dark frame here. I don't even know if you can see it. If not, we'll float the picture in. Suppose you didn't want to use f4.7. You wanted more depth of field, so you wanted a smaller aperture. Well, all you have to do is use these little up and down buttons on the side here. And what that will do is it will change your aperture. So I've gone from 4.7 to 5.6 and the shutter speed when I do it goes from a 500th to a 350th. So you can still choose which aperture you want to use for your depth of field and your creativity. If you wanted to use f16 because you're going to shoot something and you want lots of depth of field, you just set it here and it gives you the shutter speed then you go and pop it onto your camera. So look, the light meter reading in front of the groom, 125th at f8, and if we go over to the bride, it's still 125th at f8. It's changed by 0.10 of a stop. These things are very sensitive. Same exposure reading for both bride and groom because the same light is falling on them. There's one big obvious drawback with these things. Suppose you're on the holiday of a lifetime, you've gone to Nepal, you've hiked up through the fabled town of Namchi Bazaar and you're looking across to Mount Everest which is probably about 25-30 miles away. You want to take a light meter reading from Mount Everest in the sunrise, you're not going to go and hike 25 or 30 miles through the, through the Himalayas to take a reading and even if you did by the time you got back the light would have changed wouldn't it? bit pointless really. That is where the reflective meter reading of your camera really comes into its own because you can frame up the shot and the camera will tell you what it thinks. Now supposing it's a bit of a dull overcast day with a white sky and there's lots of snow everywhere you now know that that is going to trick the camera into making the exposure too dark. So all you have to do is to overexpose it a bit, set it so your light meter says that's a bit too bright and then it will probably be about right. But of course you can take test shots, it's digital, it doesn't matter. You can just take a shot and go, that's a bit dark, no, that's a bit bright, oh, it's a bit too bright, there we go, now we know what we want to do. And it's the same the other way around. If you want to shoot something at night, you're doing some night photography, the camera's going to try and brighten it up because it's a dark subject. So you need to tell it to underexpose. You can do this manually, as, same with uh, overexposing by the way, you can do this manually, just as I did, or you could use the exposure compensation button. If you don't know what I'm talking about, click the exposure compensation link below the film. 
Equally, these things are brilliant for doing what we've just done. Portraits, close-ups, macros, products, things like that. You can get a perfect exposure every time with one click. Set it on the camera and away you go. Brilliant if your light isn't changing. The light's pretty constant today. But if it was a day when the sun's going out, you've got to keep re-metering. So there you go. Two different ways to meter. Neither one is right, neither one is wrong. It's just about knowing how to use them.